This is a Sony ZV-E10. It's a fantastic little camera. It's sort of a run and gun, point and shoot, flippy out screen. Um, comes with, if you buy the kit lens, you get this little cheap kit lens. Um, good little camera, fantastic for beginner videographers. Definitely more for video uh, than photo, but it has a couple of drawbacks. Now this uh, is a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Sort of known to be one of the best budget cinema cameras you can get. Really awesome image, beautiful image, but again, has a lot of shortcomings. Bad battery life, so you gotta add big batteries on the back. Um, do that, you lose sight of the screen, so you gotta buy a screen that can control the camera. Uh, no autofocus, so you gotta get focus systems. It's got a small sensor, it's got a micro four third sensor, so you can you know, put a speed booster on there and try and get closer to that uh, Super 35 or full frame look. Fantastic camera, um, big, bulky, but looks quite impressive. So I wanted to ask myself, what could we do if we wanted to turn something like this into something like a cinema rig? This is ZV-E10 in a cinema rig, much like other cinema cameras that you'll see out there. I think it's fun, I think it looks great. It solves a lot of the issues that I have with uh, ZV-E10 on its own, including battery life, nicer lenses, external recording, better handles, um, all of the above and it's completely unnecessary, completely over the top, um, but it's a lot of fun, so let's talk about it. To get to a cinema rig out of something like this, first of all, we do need to ask the question, is it necessary? Ultimately, the answer is no, not really, um, but it's really fun and it looks cool. So I thought, let's talk about how to put it together. So we're gonna start with this and it's basically, I've designed this whole rig to come apart into three specific parts. So the first, first section, we have is the camera body. This is, this is what we're starting with. This is our base. We attach everything to this. Now the lovely thing about this uh, cage from small rig is it has a built-in Arca Swiss plate on the bottom, um, which means that we can sort of directly attach it to an Arca Swiss pl uh, clamp. Um, Arca Swiss is fantastic, especially for small cameras, light cameras, works really well to hold everything together. So that attaches to this. Now this is the base plate section that I sort of put together. We got a cheap small rig base plate, cheese plate on the back and just sort of attaching that with a couple of screws and uh, condor blue uh, six inch rails we don't really need too much longer to be honest uh, and they, they fit on there great at this point we're going to add our arca swiss clamp to the top of the uh, small rig base plate and um, this one in particular you can add with two screws which kind of holds it in place a little bit better um, and really sort of stops the camera from swiveling and one on the top and one underneath we're also going to take our Arca Swiss base plate. Uh, this is a really interesting little base plate. It comes with these like four little feet. And again, you're going to screw this in with two screws on the bottom just to stop it from swiveling. Next, we're going to take the NPF battery plate by Ulanzi on the back of the whole rig. Now, I chose to go with um, NPF batteries for a specific reason. These F970 batteries, um, you can get four of these for about a hundred bucks and it works great. They have big capacity, they're cheap, and they're easy to replace. Almost everything in this room, lights, audio stuff, everything I use, these batteries. So we've got lots of these lying around and they work great. So you can go ahead and attach that onto the back, onto this battery plate. Uh, and I love this battery plate. Out of all the ones that I looked at, the small rig options or the uh, the power junkie one, and those all look great. I love that this one has a D-tap um, and a USB-A and a USB-C. So we've got three good outputs here that we can power almost every part of our camera that we want to. Um, and any other accessories that you might want to add yourself. Um, plenty of powering options. So at this point, we can take our camera. Uh, definitely recommend open the screen to start with because you're not going to be able to do it later unless you do it now. Uh, go ahead, slide the Arca Swiss plate into the clamp. Get it lined up nice and straight. And then there's a little lever under here uh, with one that I'm using. And you can just tighten it down. That takes a little bit of tweaking to get it to where you want it. Um, and then we've got this nice looking rig already kind of happening. Uh, and I'd go ahead, open the flap doors so you can uh, access all your ports here um, before you attach the side handle because it kind of gets in the way if you're using this exact handle. If you're not, you might not face this problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna attach my USB to USB-C cable, the USB into the battery plate, and then the other end straight into the camera and tuck the cable in behind there. And it looks really nice and neat. Uh, it looks pretty good, uh, keeps everything nice and clean. Um, and then the other cable that we're going to use that I would recommend finding a right angle HDMI, micro HDMI, plugging that also into there, tucking it in behind the whole camera, uh, keeping the cables nice and clean. And then we have our full-size HDMI port 
in the back here. Now at this point, we can go ahead and we can attach our side handle. I love this tilter handle. I think it looks beautiful, feels good in the hand. Uh, it is also a nader rail, so we can just slide in directly onto um, the nader rail that we attached earlier. So that just slides down on there. Do just be careful. Be careful if you haven't got the NATO rail on quite right, you could damage your ports and damage the cables here. So I just be careful uh, when attaching that. Don't force anything, and especially these smaller ports are very delicate. So uh, do be careful with that. At this point, we can attach our third sort of assembly piece, which is the top handle. I really love this nicely rigged top handle. It's got like this sort of edge at the back, which is really handy just because this isn't a perfectly balanced setup, um, especially with this heavy lens on the front. So if it does lean forward, uh, it sort of catches a little bit, which just makes it a lot more comfortable to hold. Got my Ninja V on the front, and one of the big problems with this camera is it's got one SD card slot, so if you're filming anything important, uh, you're going to want redundant recording. So with this, we can record to the SSD that is built in or that is added to the Ninja 5, um, and record internally in the camera at the same time. Uh, and that just slides on to the top with the NATO rail um, and locks into place. And at this point, it's it's looking pretty official. We got our whole setup, and and uh, you know you got a couple of optional extras you can add. So one one thing that people love to add is something like a mini map box by Small Rig or the tilt option. Both fantastic ones. I prefer the Small Rig one. It's a bit more um, universal if you have any larger cinema lenses that have a 95 millimeter um, attachment. Uh, this will do that, the, the Tilta one will not, but the Tilta one's a bit smaller, so that's up to you. So we'll go ahead and attach that to the front. And lastly, all we have to do is a little bit of cable management, running our HDMI cable from the camera into the, or from the monitor into the camera, and using our dummy battery uh, on the back of the Ninja 5 into the DTAP port on the side of the battery plate. And if you're gonna pick up any of these pieces, I'd love it if you'd follow the links down in the description. It sort of helps out the channel, helps me grow. Now lastly, you might wanna add a couple of optional accessories that I haven't really included in this build. I mean, you might wanna add an audio solution like the Rode Wireless Go 2. Great solution, you can attach that anywhere, you know, sort of on top of the handle or the back here, wherever you want. And also if you're using cinema lenses like this one or any sort of budget options like the Rokinons, or maybe you're using the Sure anamorphic lenses like, like on here, um, which is fantastic pairing for this camera. I think it's a really fun lens to use. Um, you may want to add something like a follow focus. There's great options like the small rig uh, follow focus where it's just a wheel, or you could use the Tilt Tilta Nucleus Nano. It's a really great system. Um, again, you know, it's kind of an optional extra at this point, and this rig is already far too expensive for what it is. Alternatively, you could use something like the Sigma 16 millimeter, which is a fantastic lens for this camera. The 30 millimeter, the 56 millimeter, those ones are quite small, so they're kind of harder to fit on there. And um, but if you're using autofocus lenses, this rig still works fantastic. And then you don't need to add any of those uh, follow focus options. You can just pick up the camera, get it going, uh, and it's definitely a lot more balanced um, with smaller, lighter lenses with a larger battery on the back, and it feels really great in the hands. So yeah, I, I love this rig, um, I think it's really fun. If you have lots of these parts lying around and you have a little ZV-E10 as a fun camera, kind of like the way that I do, build it up into a rig, have a bit of fun with it. Um, but if you're just starting out, if you don't own a camera and you're like, you know what, I'm looking into the ZV-E10, I might buy it, uh, don't, don't build this, this is complete overkill. Um, it's kind of a waste of your money. So on that note, uh, if, you, if you enjoyed this content, if you like this rig, um, drop a like. Let me know down below. This is my first video that I've ever posted on YouTube. So I have no idea how this has gone. We'll find out in the edit. We'll probably find out after looking at the comments. Um, so let me know how, how yep. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, I'd love to hear them. If you think this is complete overkill the way that I do, let me know. Drop the comment down below. Uh, and I'd love it if you would subscribe. Help me build the channel up um, and we can do more of these weird camera builds or looking at uh, interesting and fun ways of getting the most out of your camera. Um, so, I don't really know how to end these videos, so uh, 